the work I work with the Community Development Services Program. I started as an intern about 12 years ago. Um, and distant me. <laughs> and I am the Space Apps Lead for Kennedy. So um, this is one of those projects that kind of works in my 10% of time. A lot of my boss lets me do outreach and other kinds of items. And so this is one I work on with the inner center, uh, center team um, at the Space Center. So this is just what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about what Space Apps is, how Kennedy's involved, what we're looking at for 2014, and then just as kind of a reference, we'll go look at the 2013 look like so you get an idea of what an event might look like. So what is Space Apps for NASA? So um, I think most of you guys are familiar with hackathons and hackathons. So that's actually not the case when I talk to most people. It's very exciting. <laughs> Some people understand the concept of getting together over a weekend and working with groups of people that haven't met. You know, sometimes you've met before, sometimes you haven't, and, and working on kind of solutions. Um, and this is our third year, so we started in 2012, and um, basically what we're looking to do is find people that have a passion for space, that have a real interest in it, and to tap into that um, exploration and get them uh, to understand what NASA does, and then also come up with innovative solutions. You know. um, NASA's workforce is your government agency, so pretty much U.S. citizens, and most people are located here in the U.S. Um, but there are people all over the world that really have a passion for space and for the work that NASA does, and so we want to tap into that. And this year, so this is an annual event that we hold, and it's held, it's held in April every year, and so this year it's uh, April 12th and 13th, so it's a little less than three weeks away. Where is it? Everywhere. <laughs> it's a worldwide event. So, um, and I'll show a picture in a little bit that'll show you the cities that it's located. Locally, um, Trap Hub is hosting the location, and then we're also um, so I'm the lead for the Kennedy one, and so we're hosting at the Center for Space Education, which is at all the visitors, Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex, so it's outside the gates. But you're right next to the rock garden, so it's pretty inspirational. Um, and these are some of the goals, and so a lot of these have to do with, um, really actually the federal government's um, open government initiative, that's part of what this program is, it's a federal government one, and then we have an open innovation program that NASA is running in association with that open government. So really, Try to get people to understand what our data is, what's out there. And so what is it to you guys? So it's a 48 hour time period that you can work on, on it. And it's gonna be all over the world. And so these are the 2013 ones. It's a little hard to see on this map. I have a better one of the 2014 ones. But it is every continent, um, including Antarctica and the previous years. I'm not sure if we got them for this year. Um, How'd you get Antarctica? It's Mercado, I mean, scientists, NASA, NASA works with scientists, so have a location. And these locations are run, um, we are the only NASA run, uh, the Kennedy Space Room is the only one that NASA center runs. These are all run by volunteers who have an interest in space, you've heard about it through various means, and said, yes, I want to do this, I want to take part in this, I want to get people together, they find a space, uh, lots of times they work with sponsors, different, different groups, um, since we're going to want to work a little bit differently, but at the same time, you know, we're doing this because uh, the team and I, Jim, Jim, David, and myself, kind of have a passion for this. It's not because anyone's directing us to do it. Um, and then the big thing is we really want any, all types of backgrounds to be coming to this. You know, you apps, and so lots of times people think traditionally, um, you know, your, your web applications, things go on mobile devices, and there are a lot of challenges that are looking for those kinds of um, solutions. There's a lot of different ones that are outside just what you think of a stereotypical app. And so you really want people from all kinds of backgrounds. So for an example, one of the ones we had last year was to design what you think Kennedy Space Center would look like in 2040, 25 plus years from now. And that could easily just be, you know, a drawing of what you think the Space Center would be, a plan or something. It doesn't have to be an app to come up with a solution. And so these are the locations we're looking at for 2040. And a lot of these are repeats. So we have, um, I think it's around 100 cities this year. Um, and it's, it's scattered in different places. And then these are the collaborators we're working with. So a lot of them are different parts of our government. Um, and then also East of the Met Office. And we had we, um, more partners last year. But this year, NASA is trying to focus more on its mission. Um, but we still have those partners we've had from other years are still, still have involvement. So even if they're not named as a primary collaborator. Oh, what is it, Met Office? Met Office, so it's the United Kingdom okay. group, and I think it's a nonprofit, is my understanding. 
And so um, they're kind of looking to do innovation work over in the United Kingdom. So Kennedy, so we have, um, we're participating in it. This is our second year doing it. And we're doing it under, there's a group out there called Spaceport Innovators. And so we're an employee, we're a totally grassroots organization. And they look, they basically get together and talk about different ways that Kennedy can be innovative. We you know, have different talks, we'll talk about just different ways of thinking about stuff. We'll sometimes bring in speakers. Um, and then we'll also do things where we look at how the center runs and how we can be more innovative, and, um, how we can apply innovative principles, basically get us to be working efficiently, maybe making connections we would normally. Um, and we're still, so this is our second year doing it, and right now we're still the only NASA center, but hopefully next year we'll get some more. Um, and so this is our team, and so David and Jim are still with it, and then Margaret is going to be assisting us, but she's not going to be a part of the core team. And then obviously I'm there. Um, and so the challenges for 2014. So this year what NASA is doing with the challenges is there's five mission areas that we're really focusing on. These are, these are core areas of NASA that we think that the public can really help us contribute to. So asteroids, Earthwatch, Earthwatch has about over half the challenges. Uh, human spaceflight, robotics, and technology in space. And what we can do is, um, depending on how the time goes, there are videos that talk about those different areas and what they're looking for. And um, maybe at, at the end of the presentation, we can also go to the website and look at some of the challenges under them so you can get a better idea of what those challenges are. And then data and education is a big part of cross-cutting all of those. So any of the challenges, they'll go under one of the mission areas, but a big thing NASA has is we have huge amounts of data. And we started to, make, to work on making them more accessible to the public and, and not just out there and available, but also some uh, can be better used by the public. And this is something that has, um, I don't know exactly how long, but I know they've been really making a lot of efforts towards the last couple of years. We have an open.nasa.gov website. And so that's a big part of using um, our NASA, our, our data. And so that's in lots of these different challenges. And then education getting the public to know about how the science works. So is it like visualizing the data or just making the data available to the public? Because it's public data anyway, right? It is, yeah. The public owns the data, that's definitely true. Um, it's really a lot of visualizations. It's so that you can, um, so basically, so, you know, it might be an educational thing, get the public to understand what the data the scientists are, but also NASA scientists don't always think of all the different ways you might visually visualize data that might be scientifically interesting completely possible that somebody else would come up with a way of looking at data. It's um, There's so many different ways to process data. And we obviously can't think of all of the different ways that you might be able to make discoveries out of, or that they might be useful. So if you're creating an app um, that uses some of the open data, it might be useful to the public or to scientists. And so by, by um, creating a visualization tool or something that can happen on a mobile site device, you can make it usable, not just visualization, but also something that somebody can use um, and see what's going on in their local area or what trends are and things like that. And so do you have to go to the event to get educated on what the data is or can you investigate you, it beforehand? You can, oh yeah, we, as much as you want to do beforehand, we highly encourage. Um, and even, you don't have to, uh, so I showed these locations around the world. So last year we had 9,000 people and 80, um, and there are 83 cities around the world. However, of those 9,000 people, 2,000 of them participated virtually. So they did it from their home in their pajamas, they were at a local coffee shop, they might have been you know, a couple people in a lab at a university. You didn't have to just go to the cities. You can connect, um, you can do it yourself. We want everything as much as possible to be accessible to everyone online. Because also, you know, these cities, uh, there will be NASA people who are going to certain cities, um, but uh, most of it's just the local organizers, and so they're really just like any of you guys, you know, that just has said, we want to do this, and so we want uh, basically anything you can get from it, you can get off the website. So the space station? Uh, yeah, um, I think that's Cape Town. Satellite. But, um, no, that is the space station. So this picture, if you go to the website, you see the space station move. So that's where the space station yeah, was when I did the screenshot. <laughs> well, I should have get a lot but, of data from it, too. Yeah, and they are, um, yeah, I don't actually know what uh, data from the space station is available, but, um, but I know that they are, um, we're going to be doing a Google Hangout with uh, people in the space station during that day. And so it is something that the astronauts have taken an interest in. Is it open by the NASA back 
open.askme.gov. That's, that's a website. Um, but the more you can poke around and find stuff, I'm going to lots of different ones. But the website for Space Apps Challenge is actually spaceappschallenge.org. It's unusual, it's not a NASA website. Um, and I have different links at the end. Um, so yeah, I can give, uh, I don't know if you guys can make the presentation available so that you guys can access it. Absolutely. So. Actually. But I skipped over the short video from our deputy office information. So, see if there's anything she might have to say. Welcome, you guys. So, this is our deputy uh, chief information officer. Hi. Hunt over to you. I wear two hats in NASA, one as the Deputy Chief Information Officer and the other as the Chief Technology Officer. In both of these roles, I have the great pleasure of leading technology and innovation for NASA. The International Space Apps Challenge is a crowdsourcing innovation program created to engage with you as creative problem solvers to help approach challenges with fresh eyes and new ideas. Here's how it works. We provide more than 40 challenges in five NASA-themed categories. Earthwatch, human spaceflight, robotics, asteroids, and space technology. With each challenge, we provide data and other resources for you to use in creating solutions. This year, we're also offering 25 intriguing solutions from 2013 that you can also build on. You decide which challenge you want to work on, form teams, and fully engage for two days. At each of the nearly 100 locations around the world, the best solutions will be selected for global awards. Winners of the global awards will be given the opportunity to attend a NASA launch event, but you will need to pay for your own travel expenses. So, join us today as a member of our Space Sovereign Community. Sign up to participate in the event on April 12th and 13th. And lastly, visit spaceoutschallenge.org for all the details. Thank you. So yes, unfortunately I skipped over that one, but I think she summarized a lot of some of the concepts I'd already gone through, but hopefully they get you guys a little bit better idea. And also visualize what some of the different sites will look like. So yeah, there are 45 different challenges in these five different categories, and then there's 27 projects from last year that this is something new they're doing, so I'm not quite sure how it's going to work. Um, it's going to be up to participants, we'll see. But basically, they're projects that they considered very successful from last year, and that are good good ones that we can build on. Because everything that you're submitting will be um, under some kind of open source licensing, so that is, that is part of when you participate in this. It is, um, you know, you can build something proprietary off of it, but the part that you put and you submit as a solution, that will be an open source one. There are a couple different licenses you can choose from. Um, but yeah, so these are these are challenges you can build upon. And so Kennedy Space Center, um, so we worked with, um, as part of working with NASA headquarters, um, we came up with different challenges we thought would be good. And of those 45 challenges, we have three of them that are KSC specific ones that um, we have subject matter experts and we're the ones who wrote the challenges. So the first one is Space Wearables. Um, we came up with catchy titles. Um, and so this one is looking at what are what are things that, you know, wearables is becoming, um, you know, a new technology development, there's lots of innovation. There are things like Google Glass, there's really new kind of watches and other devices that you have kind of on you. And how might astronauts use those? And then also really tying to Kennedy Space Center is we do a lot of ground processing so there are lots of times that we have engineers and technicians they are out of the pads doing all kinds of work and they don't have their, they can't bring their laptop along with them. So what might they have that they can wear on them to help them collect data, record information? Growing food for Martian Table. This is actually, we had a challenge last year called Employable Greenhouse, um, which is a challenge where we had participants design a greenhouse that would go um, ahead of habitat development and either start uh, growing food or also be ready when the astronauts get there to start growing the food um, itself. And so this is basically the same challenge but we, we found last year that the participants didn't focus a lot on habitat so we want them to have 
at least figure out how the greenhouse would interface with the habitat, what kind of habitat they're designing it for. Um, and this is one we had the greatest interest from around the world. We actually have someone in Finland who's doing his master's thesis based on his original so the solution that they came up with. And then asteroid prospector. So this is one where you were looking for participants to design a game where you would go from asteroid to asteroid and mine the asteroids. And so you'd be learning about um, basically what is the industry that might potentially build up from going to different asteroids and all the different um, minerals and all kinds of resources they have available. And there's about a million different ways you can take that game. <laughs> so, and then we have launch moon opportunity prizes. This, this is something that Kennedy is offering separate from it, um, from the global challenges we actually have for our three challenges. If you try them, you um, and, and create a bit a 37 video. We will launch you an opportunity prize. And at the end, I have a slide that talks about the details of it. This is something we offered last year also. So this goes into a little bit, these are different, these are just my ideas that I've jotted down of different kinds of solutions. So as you can see, visualizations, maps, um, tools that use our data sets, you can be designing a payload, um, different libraries, you should be looking at how you use social media to educate the world about um, science that we're, that we're working with. Um, apps that talk, uh, give you information based on the user location, different games, um, modeling you might do. So. These are just a couple examples. And then these are some different solutions that were developed for the 2012 one. And so you can see we have a mobile app. There's actually hardware elements. So you might be developing um, a hardware solution to one of the challenges. Um, and then the ones above are one's visualization of data. It's Kepler, so that was looking at exoplanets in the, in the sky. And then pineapples, one where you put your location and um, learn information um, about crops for your area. So what we're doing, so at the end of the weekend we have the solutions and each each location is going to do individual judging. And um, they're going to come up with two solutions that they will nominate for global judging. And then also they'll have a People's Choice Award. So you have global judging and then People's Choice. And then um, the solutions will then come up uh, the project teams will then come up with a 30 second video for their solution. And this is one that the global judges are going to use for theirs. And then also for the KSC judging, we'll be using basically the exact same format. So a team, if they were working on a KSC challenge and they submit for global judging, we use the exact same um, video and data um, for our KSC judging. And then these are the headquarters. These are their different um, categories, uh, a lot of people's choice. And then, so they'll be doing their judging up there, and then for our uh, uh, challenges, we'll come up with a panel of subject matter experts for each challenge and have them um, do judging in about the month after the challenge. So should we encourage people to, be, to choose uh, a people's choice that isn't one of the other two that we selected, or if they select a people's choice, should we select another team? So this is something new they're doing from last year, and so I'm not sure how to direct you yet, because what I, I think that um, I'm not sure if the people's choice goes just towards the people's choice or if it'll be for the other categories. Because if that's true, then even if they may not go under the other five categories, your best solution might be your best chance of the people's choice. So there's there's kind of different ways and I just learned about this recently. <laughs> so um, I still actually need to pose that question to them and figure out exactly how they are. So it might it might be that you want a different one, but it might be that you're, you're, with everyone agreed, the judges agreed is the best one, that would be your best shot for people's choice. So, we'll see. Um, and then, so our events, this we did last year, so it was a little bit later in April, and we were at the Center for Space Education. We had a 32 hour time period, and so we actually had a room where participants, if we wanted, they could bring sleeping bags. Um, with some of the college students didn't have sleeping bags, <laughs> they just slept on the floor um, and on site. Which, because we're a little bit further away, um, you know, that we really needed to make sure we had that. And so we had 21 participants, and we really had about half college students from um, University of Central Florida and University of South Florida, and then half were professionals, and they were, you know, ages 20 to 60. So a kind of a really diverse group. We had some people that came. Um, most people were from Central Florida, but we had someone who had she's up from north of Jacksonville. Um, and just because we're a Kennedy Space Center, we've had it, we've at least had interest from people from other countries potentially come in. Well, 
We'll see if anyone actually does that this year. <laughs> but we definitely had quite a few people talk about it last year, and then others um, talk about it this year. And so mostly we gave um, a couple talks at University of Central Florida, and really our main our main thing was um, emailing other organizations. And this year the small business uh, group at Kennedy Space Center is what uh, hooked us up with Trap Hunt. So here's this is the visitor center. But I'll play. Oops. Astronauts may have fresh fruits and vegetables during future missions, thanks to the 2013 International Space Apps Challenge. Space enthusiasts with the first background of the Kennedy Space Center and the general public converged at the Center for Space Education at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex and around the world. They gathered on April 20th and 21st to develop and pitch their ideas to NASA. Kennedy's teams brainstormed ideas and talk with NASA subject matter experts to solve challenges relevant to improving life on Earth and in space. Kennedy Space Center is the first ever NASA Center to host the challenge. Kennedy Space Center will be reviewing the solutions for the KSC challenges. So we'll have the whole world looking at these challenges and come up with interesting solutions. Worldwide, more than 5,000 people and 484 organizations competed in 83 cities across 44 countries, as well as online into their ideas and panels of technical and non-technical judges. We're here at the Center for Space Education working for the KSC Space Apps Challenge for the weekend. Uh, we've been working with Envision KSC 2040 all weekend. Uh, it's been a lot of great brainstorming, a lot of creative ideas. The winning team from Kennedy presented their idea for using a space-based greenhouse as a stop-off point to gather fresh food to sustain them during their space voyage. Today, my team worked on the deployable greenhouse project. We designed and did a presentation on a greenhouse for astronauts traveling to the moon, Mars, or near Earth objects to collect fresh produce in space. Our team came in first, and we also got the People's Choice Award from the other participants. So the International Space Apps Challenge grew out of our involvement. Let's see, that's one of the founders of the program. They currently came up with it at a hotel restaurant on the back. Um, but here's a picture of our participants last year at the Rocket Garden, and many of you guys from big NASA enthusiasts you might see. We have Administrator Charlie Bolden, President of NASA, and Bob Cabana. So. Um, Mr. Bolden was in town for the Astronaut Hall of Fame and he wanted to swim by and so this was his first time getting to go to a space observation. But he's not in town this weekend so we're not expecting that. <laughs> but um, Mr. Cabana might stop by. So He's the center director of Kennedy Space Center. So at the Kennedy Space Center event, um, we start the morning um, you know, getting logistics, registration, doing speed networking, we also had, um, for our three challenges, we had subject matter expert briefings. So basically at our site, we had the people that came up and developed the challenges. They stay at the site, um, not the entire weekend, but for a good portion of the weekend, helping um, talk about the challenges. We did Google Hangouts with the rest of the world. Um, and then also just helping our local teams work on the projects. So we had ones, both focused on our challenges, and then we also had some people from Kennedy who were just there as subject matter experts about Kennedy Space Center and as people involved in the, aeros in the, the center and the aerospace engineering uh, of the world. I have a question. Why did it call 2040 challenge? You were supposed to deploy this in 2040? It was to envision what Kennedy, so for this particular oh, okay. one, what it would look like in 2040. So we wanted to pick a far off date where lots of things could happen. You know, if you look back at what, Kennedy, what where we were 25 years ago, um, it's hard to not to envision that from, from that starting point. So the idea is to go far enough out that you can just make up wild things. You know, and to some degree, if you go back far enough, you know, us partnering with the Russians would be kind of an unthinkable thing. And right now, partnering with China would be another thing. When would that might that change? So there's lots of different things you can, you can imagine. We love that t-shirt, future. 
Um, and uh, it's Mr. Bolden. He gave us an impromptu talk. We had to rearrange our schedule a little bit. We were expecting that. <laughs> and then this is just one of the rooms we had. We had several different breakout rooms where teams could gather. Um, for ours, the group was small enough that every group got their own room. So I'm sure, if you get uh, laptop parties are not uncommon. <laughs> at it and we had whiteboards that they could work on. And then uh, so we have Phil is in there. We had um, most of the people who worked at Kennedy Space Center, they came as subject matter experts, they weren't participants, but we did have one full-time employee and a couple interns who were participants. So we expect to have that this year too, also a couple sprinkled in. Um, we were just there like any member of the public just working on a solution. And then these are just some of the different rooms that our groups were in. So we had a one thing at Kennedy Space Center, because of the, the location we're at, we're not allowed to use hardware. So if um, if anyone wanted to attempt a hardware challenge, um, we're just not we're not the site for that. Um, but these guys use cardboard and scissors. So they can use that. <laughs> uh, we also did a progress briefing, kind of um, a couple hours from the first day, so people could talk about what they're doing, what their work is, and then also they can identify. I mean, it's a scrum meeting, which is kind of where you stand up and talk about where you're at where you're planning on going and what problems you think you might have. And that way, any of the other groups, you know, once they talked about that, they could come up to them afterwards and say, you know, hey, have you guys tried this? And we looked at that. Because um, even though there is, you know, a certain amount, of, a small amount of competition in it, it's really the idea is to get people working together. And so we want that, um, not just for people working on the same challenges, but people at our same site. One of our groups is very good about using social media to contact other, other groups. So uh, these are just a couple of our, our Kennedy Space or, or subject matter experts. And so we had a uh, part of the afternoon where they did Google Hangouts. Made sure you had an inspirational background behind them. And then if you guys have ever done Code of Laws, Hack you know, the, the late night pizza break with cookies and candy is very important. <laughs> so we had lots of socialization and being silly for a little bit. <coughs> Um, we also, we did have, these are the people who are awake at 2.30 in the morning when we talked to Jakarta in Indonesia. So the big thing of this being a worldwide event is it's going on constantly. Kind of once it starts, it actually goes on for about three days <laughs> because of the time differences. Um, Hawaii is the last one. And so Jakarta was run by a U.S. Embassy, and so they, they decided they want to talk to Kennedy Space Center. So we got together with whoever was still awake and talked to them for a little bit. And then these are just our different groups giving presentations. They all can present it in completely different ways, <laughs> um, which is great. So they have very unique solutions. And we had judges for ours. Um, we made sure we had an odd number of judges. So we had someone from Kennedy who was from a technical background, someone who was from a business background, and then someone who was from outside the Space Center, just to give a little bit of diversity. And this is our winning team. And so they were our overall location winner, and they were also our people's choice. And our second place team was very close to them in people's choice. So um, but they were one of the greenhouse teams. And then these are just some tweets. These are by two of our very active, uh, two people who stated who were active on uh, Twitter. Just some different comments they had. So, and one of them, the last one is actually from this year. We asked them what their favorite thing was about it. And so she still actively is, is interested in what's going on with the space apps. And she's, she'll still actually, because I, I follow her. <laughs> so throughout the year, she'll, if she sees anything around the, the Spaceport 2040, that's the challenge she worked on, she'll still comment about it. Um, okay, I think I've covered this. Yeah, we had the, subnet, the, the subject matter experts at the event. sure what happened to this picture. But anyways, these are just, these are the KSC ones. These are some of the different teams. Um, the other one was somebody actually did kind of a, a drawing that you might see, like um, a drawing of what the spaceport might look like. And the other people, they created websites. They didn't have anything visually, but they talked about what they, how they saw it. They actually saw a lot more commercialization in the spaceport. Oh, there we go. Um, this is Moonville, so kind of like I talked about the Asteroid Prospector Challenge we have this year. Moonville was one we had last year about industry on the moon, and so it was games. And some people came up with 
This is um, an Android app that they did in Monopoly. This is the winner. And this one was um, international teams. So this is people who mostly participated virtually. Some people were at different sites. We had one of our interns who was at Kennedy Space Center. She was at our location who worked on this. She did some of the graphics for them. So this one was a truly international. I know Netherlands, Indonesia, and us, and there were like three or four other countries involved in the team. And then a couple teams, we didn't specify that it had to be a, a web or a mobile game, a um, computer game. So they actually came up with um, you know, a board game that you might play. And then this is a deployable greenhouse, and um, above are some of the CAD drawings that the Space Veggies team, and that's the finished team from one um, from us. And then, as mentioned, we had the, the put on for the make. So the Maven launch was the launch opportunity that they got to come and be a part of. And so um, we had a social for them the night before the launch um, at Fish Lips, and um, that way they could meet each other, interact. And we had uh, people that came for Kennedy Space Center. There were about um, we had a larger number of guests than we had this year, but there were, there were about 60 of them, and two thirds of them were from interna were international. They were coming in from different countries, um, and then the rest were mostly. The other third, mostly from Florida and a couple other parts of the U.S. So the fish takes the winter at Times Square? We did it up at the Cape. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they're sick, because yeah, there's grills down here with my fish lips. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Um, and this is the bus. And so a couple of these people are actually from NASA headquarters, because the global winners also came in for the same launch. So we got to mix the Kennedy Space Center winners in with the global winners. Um, and so that was another. Um, I think they had about 40 people that ended up coming for them. So it was a lot of fun to meet um, these people and see how they talked about their experiences at different centers or at different sites. And then um, these are just some tweets. So the first two are places, you know, Bulgaria and Madagascar or Macedonia that, um, that worked on KSC challenges. Um, and once the team, you know, this the Finnish team, once they realized they were coming here, the Catan is from England. And then Beth Beck, she is the, um, she's in charge of the, the open uh, innovation program under which we are. So she was part of that too. So for our event for this year, so uh, we are the 12th and 13th. And so we still have it, got it finalized, but we're planning on having kind of an optional social uh, gathering. April 11th, that was one thing that we found with last year is it took us a little bit, um, it's, you have a limited period of time, so we want to try and do as much of the networking as we can do before um, getting people to know, and so we, we reformat our schedule based on that. Um, we're also going to be doing the same Google Hangouts. Um, we're probably thinking the Wednesday or Thursday before that event, we'll do one that's just focused on all the KSC challenges, and then we'll do ones during that event. So if any of you guys are working down here, but you're working on a KSC challenge, you'll be able to connect to the Google Hangout. Um, there are also email addresses, and, um, and a, at least and one of our subject matter experts is incredibly active on Twitter and blogging. So there are a couple different ways you can access them, and that will be true of a lot of, the, a lot of the challenges. And then what we will be having also for our location is a launch an opportunity prize. So our first place at our, our, at our site will be the same one as the challenge winners. And there's going to be a hangout with astronauts. Um, in the middle of the day. So this is the launch viewing price. So each team will have um, two people that they'll be able to, two team members um, will receive launch invitations and they'll get another, they'll each get one guest. So there'll be four people. So you can either have it be a family, it depends on the size of your team, which you want to do. You have a little bit of flexibility. So our location one will be announced that, um, that Sunday. Um, and then we'll take with it uh, by at least June that we'll announce who the challenge winners are. So, and then these are the different, there's the Space Apps Challenge website, and then we have our location page on there. And we have a Tumblr page that's actually where we get a lot of our information. We have Twitter accounts. Um, we've just started a Facebook page, and we have a Google page too, but we, we mainly are using that for Hangouts right now. Oh, I forgot to take off the SharePoint. You guys can't access that. <laughs> and then this is the email address for um, the Kennedy team. So that's how you reach myself and then uh, David and Joe. So if you guys have any questions about anything related to Kennedy, um, you guys can contact us. And then also this is the logo for this, the Trump Hub one. So 
that you guys will be currently having a location. Um, Brandon is going to be is at least is working on that, and um, he's the one that if you have any questions about logistics, that you can go to. But, um, but since we have experience with that, we'll also be answering any of Brandon's questions he has. You know, first time, uh, first time running it. And um, oh, the other thing that we have to talk about, um, I did talk about this with Brandon and Matt, is that we might do the weekend before we might get together here and have people start to talk about challenges and start to network and stuff. And I think we'd invite that um, anyone from the Central Florida area that wants to come in, whether they're at your site, our site, or even virtually participating, um, just to get together and start to meet each other. So we still have to get the details on that, <laughs> and I'm sure that's happening. But that's something that might be coming up too. In the next would be about a week and a half from now. So why why participate in it? So I mean, basically, you get to say that you're working for NASA for the weekend, <laughs> and um, you know, we really uh, really appreciate it because this is a lot of time that you that if you're doing this, it is really um, you know commitment the work that you're doing. And so NASA definitely appreciates that. Um, Mr. Golden, when he came down, that was the thing he charged. <laughs> he actually called me out on. He's like, you need to make sure that. Kelly tells you how your solutions are going to be used, you know, what, at least how people are going to be looking at them. They were reviewing that data. And I know for our community space and ones, our subject matter experts were the ones on the judges' panels. They saw any of the completed solutions that came through. Um, so, which will be able to, to basically assist us. It'll give you a chance to connect with NASA employees. Um, and then also, you know, you'll be able to connect with innovators here, you know, in, in Central Florida, but also really around the world. It really is an event where we want people to be talking to each other and really focused on coming up with innovative as possible, not focus on the competition, just focus on coming up with what are the best solutions you can come up with. And then I put develop skills, it's a little vague because there's so many different kinds of skills you might develop. I mean, there's a certain amount of creating apps, but also if you're working with hardware, there's all kinds of skills you might develop by just working with other people. Or even if you don't develop your own, you might get a chance to mentor. Yeah, that's one thing that we laughed a little bit last year. We had um, the UCF Mobile Makers Club had a lot of people who were really excited about coding, but our professionals, our, our older um, ones, we didn't have a lot of experienced coders in the older group, so they, they did um, struggle a little bit with that. But you might have a chance to work on that and help somebody out, um, help them develop their own skills. So this is just a summary. Um, but do you guys have any questions before I can go to the website also and just show you guys some of that stuff? So. so to participate, uh -huh. um, did I hear understand that there's, there would be a team out of Trek Hub? Um, or, or is it have the team's already been selected? Oh no, the team's haven't been selected. Okay. And they're actually, you work, um, that's something you you can do some work ahead of time. They really kind of the space apps encourage. Um, that's where the event on the weekend before might be a chance to start to meet people and talk about stuff. But really, that weekend is when you're going to be forming a team and kind of finalizing it. I do know some people. Um, most people only work on one solution with one team, but it's not unusual. Sometimes people either multitask or else they decide something else may sound a little more interesting, so they may switch throughout the weekend. Um, so this, the idea is the formulation would occur. And then be implemented on that on that weekend. Yep. Okay. It's it's a it's a bit of a crazy weekend. Yeah. You're you're definitely a lot of things are going on. And to let's see. To register. Oh. Let me you said out. space it's entitled space apps, but that was a greenhouse. It I, is space I kind apps. Of think of space is apps is software. Maybe not. Maybe it is a little bit of a misnomer. Or okay. I don't think I said it word right. Um, <laughs> misnomer. There we go. <laughs> but it is, um, and it's something that it, they got the name and they've been sticking with the name to keep consistent with branding. But it is really all kinds of solutions. And that's, um, I think it was before you came in, but yeah, just, I mean, you'd be coming into the drawing. You might be developing a website that just talks about the idea. I mean, you could be coming with a paper about how you might approach it. There's all kinds of different ways you might do it. And as uh, yeah, you might come up with a board game. That's not an app, <laughs> but there's there are applications. And if you think about application in a very broad definition, that's what they are. So, but yeah, you can you can register and you can choose to do virtual participation. 
and then if you look, you will see a hundred different cities. Normally they're in bars of three. So there is a fee to pay for the registration? No, it's a free event. And so and actually all events are required to be free. There might be a charge for food or t-shirts, depending on the location, but um, the event itself will be free. So yeah, it's part of it. It's a great thing about working for the government or government stuff is that often they'll try and do things free. So yeah, they want as much open participation. Um, but like at our event, we um, if you're on site, you can either bring your food um, or, or you might have to buy, purchase it from the visitor center. So if you don't bring your own food, you have to live with your prices. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, so here's our space wearables one. And so they have hashtags. They also have, um, and this is the, the email address that you can contact the challenge um, owners. Um, Who are the challenge owners? So they are people, so people throughout NASA. So, um, so the three ones that I've mentioned, they're subject matter experts at Kennedy Space Center, so I can name those. The other challenges, I don't know the people themselves, um, but they're mostly going to be NASA employees. So, and I know they'll be, they're planning on, um, they know that the questions are going to be coming. And this is real stuff that you really want to build, and you're really just crowdsourcing. Some of it is, um, it's kind of a variation. Some of it are innovative things that we haven't figured out how we might do, but we think that we might be interested in doing it. That's where we look to the public to tell us how might we do this, how might we go forward. Um, and like the games and stuff are things that potentially NASA could could work on, but really that's something that somebody else, you know, game developer might take off with. So um, and for, there's no there's at least with ours, yeah, we, we're going to look at it, but there is no promise that NASA is going to use anything. It's developed. Does intellectual property then belong to NASA? Or it's open source. Just, it's open source, right? Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's open source and there are different licenses. I know there's like, I have to go back and look at some of the projects. But they have a got that's a couple, that is something that's built in the, um, I'm not sure where it is on the website. <laughs> um, but I think, I know there are a couple different kinds of open licenses and you can choose one. Um, and there, there are questions, so there's these things called hack pads. And so you can see there's somebody's name and I can type on that. And see so these are questions that you can go and ask and somebody will, um, from Space Apps will get to. And so you can see the answers to your questions. Um, there are also, when we were on the challenges page, there's a hack pad for each challenge. So if you have a challenge you're interested in, then, um, so you can see this is something where I've actually gone through and told people, hey, this is at a Kennedy Space Center. We're gonna be having Google Hangouts. And there are prizes. I'm not sure, yeah, it's still it's still getting up. But once you get closer to the weekend, these are gonna start filling up with people talking about, you know, I wanna work on this. Is anyone else want interest, interested? Um, and start so gonna start forming teams. They're gonna start asking questions, sharing resources and all that kind of information with each other using these hack pads. In addition to the hashtags, you might share on Facebook or Twitter. And wherever else you might use hashtags. <laughs> then you can on Tumblr too. So yeah, so there's a description. And these are intended to be descriptions to get you thinking. There, there's definitely been formulated so that there's not just one set solution. And so it's a, a challenge description, it gives you a bit of background, tells you how a solution might look just as examples and then give you some resources you might consider. So, do you have a question or? Um, let's see. So yeah, and so if you go to our location page, and so this is going to give you some of the logistical information. For example, our Kennedy Space Center one, um, we're going to have we have a requirement that um, anyone participating be 16 years old or up, and then if you're 16 or 17, that you have a permission form and you're not allowed to stay overnight. So those are just logistical elements for our location in particular. Um, 
and then just you know things like directions and information. And so all the different sites will have that. And um, when you register, you can designate either a virtual or also designate one of the sites. Let's see. And so here's our Tumblr page. The Twitter and Facebook ones you can go to um, also, and most people are usually familiar with those tools, but our Tumblr is, this isn't one I've used before I started doing it. And so this is kind of like a blog posting, but this is where we have a lot of our information. Um, so this is the full details on our launch of op the viewing opportunity prize. Um, and then we have things like, you know, we posted the world at this meetup. <laughs> And our logistics, you know, anything that we'll be doing, we're going to be emailing out fully, but we have um, a post that has logistics from last year. And so this is where a lot of information you can find out about what we did last year. So we'll be doing a lot of the similar, the same things. So, so we basically kind of treat it like a website. And you can go and see, this was active last year, so you can see all our posts from the last year and see how our site did it. You can also go and see what other sites around the world have done. I can show you more videos, more websites, but I don't know if you guys have any other questions. I'm good about asking them throughout, which is great. <laughs> so, uh, can somebody uh, participate remotely with it's team locally? Yes, and so, and also for our launch viewing prize, um, yeah, so that's encouraged anywhere, and so you can actually, um, and if a team is, let's say we had a, you guys had a team here and they work with somebody at Kennedy Space Center and then somebody in the Netherlands. You guys can present your solutions for that exact same project at all three locations, um, depending on how you want to do it. But if it was presented at Kennedy, as long as one of the people is there for our launch day opportunity prize, that'll be that'll be done. But yeah, they, they really encourage as much as possible working um, with, with different teams. And it also so, could be somebody at home. Uh, presenting is happening at the very end. Um, most locations, yeah, the presenting happens at the end of the day Sunday. So, like for ours, um, Center for Space Education closes by a certain time, <laughs> by 5 o'clock. So, we're going to be doing our judging in the about 2 o'clock. But some sites, you know, if they're able to stay open until 10 o'clock, they're going to be doing their judging at 7 o'clock. It just depends on each location. And if you participate virtually, um, you can still be put in to be a part of the global judging. You just have to. Um, to the 30 minute, the 30 second video. Um, but even if done that weekend, what? 30 second videos. No, it has to be done. They haven't, haven't gotten a firm date out of them, but it's actually looking like about Wednesday of that week. It's, um, it's a different timeline than they did last year. So that's why last year they had about two weeks, but they didn't do a two minute video. This year it has to be, it's only 30 seconds, but it has to be done quicker. I think the idea being that it, it's because you're getting people together and they split apart very quickly. <laughs> So depending on where it's at. Um, but anything that you worked on, if you want to be, you have to upload it to the website. Then they have different ways. They have things like GitHub. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that for, yes. for sure. Okay, great. Yeah, things Actually, like that. Actually, GitHub in our name works with the Ah, very nice. So yeah, GitHub is very common. It's how people uh, submit their solutions. But there's things like people have links to Google Docs. You know, it all depends on what your, what your solution looks like is how you submit it. Is there an age limit? Um, not for the globe, not not as a whole. For the Kennedy Space Center location, our location has one, but as a whole, there's no age limit. What's the age limit? <laughs> <laughs> it could be 93. <laughs> so there's no limit, <laughs> just an upper one. Yeah, there's there's only an upper one uh, for our location, yes. Or a minimum. The projects, I'll show you. So the challenge, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's a hard thing to, to understand. And yeah, because I'm still, I'm still working on it. So the challenge is, this is a challenge, you know, design wearable. Um, but a project, here I'll give you some project examples. So here's, here's the main challenge website. You can go to here are the, the five different um, categories. And I think it was under human space So these are the videos. These are about 
one and a half to two minute videos that summarize each of them. I know, it's a 30 second video. And so you can, you can filter by a couple different things. There's also difficulty levels for the different challenges. Um, they don't apply to the solutions, but they do apply to sound, the challenges. So you can select, I only want to see challenges and I only want to see easy ones. This one doesn't have any easy ones. Um, there you go, <laughs> intermediate. So the growing food for Martian table, and these were determined by the, um, the, uh, the, solution, the uh, challenge creators. And then the solutions, let's see if we have, there you go, so space veggies. So this is the video that they developed last year. And then this is the concept they came up, they, they worked on. Um, and so it talks about kind of specifics. This one's unusual in that there's a challenge for still this year, but a lot of the challenges from last year, we don't have them at all this year. So you're expanding off of a challenge that doesn't exist for this year. So if there was some aspect of something that happened last year that you might have an interest in, that's where this would be a useful one for you to go to. So let me go to a different challenge that again doesn't have a, a corresponding one for this year. This is a project, yeah. This is a 2013 solution. So this is a video they have. Actually, would you guys like to see one of the videos? Sure. Just to see what they came up with. Most people don't realize the International Space Station flies over their heads multiple times per day. We were surprised to find out that this engineering model passes over an affiliate up to seven times per day and can actually be seen by the naked eye. Our group came together to let others know when and where the station would be passing in real time. As the project manager, I guided our team in a three-pronged approach to get this information out. The first approach was to develop a web app that tracks the ISS as if it was different. It identifies the location of the user and displays it on the map, along with the most recent and current locations of the ISS. The second approach was to develop an iOS app that shows where the ISS is in the sky in a user-friendly manner. An augmented reality icon depicting the ISS location is displayed on the screen as the space station comes in the camera field of view. The idea behind the final approach was to create a public display which would point in the direction of the ISS. Imagine an astronaut or a child pointing at the sky and following the space station as it passes overhead. As a demo, our team used connects to construct a mechanical pointer. A little power Arduino receives the relative ISS coordinates from a low server. And then controls two servos to aim the pointer at the location of the ISS in the sky. We would like to thank NASA, the sponsor of Space Apps Philly, and the International Space Apps Challenge, and all the other participants for making this possible. Thank, thank you. you. So this is an example where they developed it, and so NASA has basically identified these 27 challenges as ones that they think are particularly useful, and they want more work done on it. They're not dedicating at least right now, they're not dedicating past resources, but to creator, dedicating this year's resources at Space Apps to further these. Because um, NASA does have something called space, Spot the Space Station. Spot the Space Station. And you can have emailed or texted to you, you know, um, that day. Um, if the ISS is going to be flying overhead, and what, um, you know, at dawn or dusk, and what orientation it's going to be at. Um, so you know, if you know, <laughs> basically, if you know, uh, your, your cardinal coordinates, and then also you know what inclination to look at, you can find it. They're developing something further beyond that, something that you can visualize either on your phone or else a physical pointer. So it's something that they're doing beyond what NASA's already providing. Yeah, and so these are, like uh, as I mentioned, each, each one you have to come up with a license. So this MIT license is an example of an open source license that each solution has to have designated. And so this is something independent of space apps. This is just, these are commonly known um, open source licenses. Um, and it tells you um, what, how the software can be used. This is not my expertise, but these are, these are things they have available on the website. And you'll be seeing different teams using that. And you can also, you can ask people in your community that you guys know from Trap Hub, or even you can ask Space apps people, you know, just pose a question on Twitter with hashtag space apps, and you'll probably get somebody who's more who's an expert in this more than I am. You know, about who should I ask about licensing? Or if you have particular questions, you can pose it to them.
thank you very much for coming out and uh, presenting to us. Yeah, thank you guys so much for your attention. I'm glad that you guys are interested. Thank you.